What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today we are continuing with the RPG series. We will continue with the stat system, so the health, stamina, XP and level. And what we will do today is basically go ahead and fix what we were doing in the last episode and continue on and implement the stamina when you run. And then also we'll see if we have time to get started with the XP and level system. So we'll see. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is go into open up the um, basically the blueprint component, the BPC player stats. So in the last episode, we did that you can debug with the one key, how uh, the health will decrease and the stamina increase. This is just for testing, but things that we can get into negative numbers in our um, health. And also when we exit uh, the play, we have a few errors. So let's go ahead and fix all this. So first of all, the errors are because basically we are we are in the beginning playing when the game starts we are trying to access the player's hud before it actually has been created in the player so basically this code is running before the variable for the hud is being assigned so the only thing that we have to do is just make a small delay and a very good delay that we can use is delay until next tick Basically, this will wait one frame. So that should be enough in order to basically assign the variable in our place. So now, if we do uh, you know anything, uh, you will see that we don't have any errors. So great, everything is working on that part over here. So um, that is fixed. Great, so another thing that we have to do is fix the decrease health over here. So let's go into the decrease health um, function. And what we have to do is copy this statement over here. So if health is smaller and equal than zero and the thing is that we also have to check it before we um call the function so this will be basically plugged into here and this will be a not boolean so basically if the player is uh, alive okay so it does not have um less than uh, zero in that place and then what we can do is get this one off here uh, actually we can leave it and I will explain one in a second. And then we can plug in the false into the, uh, sorry, it's player dead uh, in this one over here. Okay, so we will just copy and paste this note over here, adding a not gate. Um, so why are we doing this? Well, this is because basically we were trying to um, go ahead and decrease health right off the bat. Now, we were controlling if it was dead, but still, we could decrease the health, and we don't want this. So now, we'll, this will prevent it of decreasing every time we call it. And the thing is that we want to keep this over here, because imagine that we get hit. Well, it will be better to get hit, and if it gets into zero, die, then wait until we get hit again, with already the health being zero, then die. Anyway, it's just a matter of sequence, so we have to do this. So, we will plug the false over into the is that is true and then not get over here and we'll basically need to do exactly the same on the decreased stamina because if not we'll have the same problem so just copy this boolean over here paste it and then connect it here and then this will be on the false because we will add the not boolean so i prefer to have and remember to plug it in um the main conditions on true sorry true uh, i don't know why I did say false on true Okay, so this isn't true. This is not a not gate. And then the false will go directly into here, like we did with the other one. And then we can just put this over here so it's a bit more um, clear. Great, so that's done. So now if I press play, you will see that now when I press one, it does get to zero and we don't die. Great, so let's first of all go ahead and implement um, the damage system. So what we're going to do is open the third person character blueprint and their third person and blueprints. And then what we can do is get started with the um, calling the functions when we get hit. Uh, basically calling this, this stuff, okay? So what we have to do is basically make this note, which is, uh, um, sorry, event any damage. Any damage. So basically when the player receives any damage, it will call this note. And on here we will receive the amount of damage taken, who was the one that uh, sent us the damage, and so on. So we can do a lot of cool stuff. So what we're going to do is get the BBC player stats component and basically just go ahead and decrease health. And it is as simple as just going ahead and plugging the death taken into here. And that's it. 
uh, we have all the control and flow and calculations inside this node. So everything is nice and organized. And also, it's an external component, so even better. <laughs> and now we'll have this is player dead. So here we can do stuff. So what we can do is make a branch over here and say, well, if the player is dead, we can go ahead and call the die uh, event. So we can go ahead and create a new custom event. Which basically, will be die. And then on here, we will go ahead and play the die um, effect. And then on false, what we can do is make all of the other effects that we want to get hit with the sounds and stuff. And in die, we'll do the effects only for the die. So ragdoll and stuff. So we'll go ahead and, for example, make the ragdoll effect. So what we can do is, first of all, disable input. We don't want our player to be able to move again. If we are dead, we are dead. Okay. And then what we want to do is basically get our mesh. So we'll get the model of the um, character. This one over there. And what I want to do is set simulate physics ticked on. So now basically it would uh, enable the physics on all its bones and it will just allow it to uh, flow. Now, that's the thing that we have to check and it's in mesh. Go down over here and make sure that the collision preset is set on um, custom. And then we change the collision enabled to be collision enabled query and physics because we need uh, this mesh to be uh, having this physics and collisions enabled. And now let's go into the capsule component. And what we have to do is set this collision preset to ignore only pawn, because if not, the own mesh will be colliding with the capsule component while we're in Ragdoll, and it will just fly around, and we don't want that. All right, so let's go ahead and command this. So select everything, press C, die, and then uh, command everything, press C, and then um damage uh, apply damage okay and then what we can do is just move this one around so this is just debugging and we can put nice and organize this under here great and another thing that we're going to do is set a preset for this so a lot of you guys were putting in the comments that i can actually create a preset for the color so we don't have to copy manually anything so that's very handy so we can just select this color over here and then uh, you will see that there's already a preset uh, made over here. So we can just rename it into be just, for example, dark and then say accept. And now what we can do is just get this color over here, either old or new, and just drag it into this part over here. And now the dark will be assigned. So now we can go into the applied damage, open the color and then select this preset over here. And it's just much faster, as you can see. And let's just put this debug stuff over here down. Great, so now immediately you will see that when uh, we press one and we die, nothing happens. Great, so <laughs> what is happening? And it is just because I forgot that we have to call the damage event instead of just the normal debug um, decrease health. So now we don't need all this. What we can do is just call uh, apply damage. And then the damage actor will be basically self. And then the base damage, you can say like, for example, 10. So now instead of directly going through the player stats, we need to apply health to the actor itself, which can be done with this node, which is apply damage, which Unreal Engine will already call this event on any damage. Okay. So now when I press one and there we go, <laughs> we are dead and we cannot move on anything. Great. So of course, in the future, what effects, sounds and so on. Great. So that's working. So now that's done for the health. Uh, for the basics of the health, of course, we have many more things to do in the future, but for now, it's okay. Now we can move on into the stamina system. Great, so let's go ahead and start creating an input. So let's go into third person, input, actions. Let's go ahead and go and create a new input, action, EA underscore, and it's going to be sprint. Let's go ahead and open this. Um, and we actually don't have to change anything. The value tab will be still a bool. So now we can go into the collection, and we can add a new mapping. And this will be the sprint and now we can click this button right here and then press any key in our keyboard which in our case will be um let's say pff, left control because we're already using the the shift for about in in the future we'll, we'll arrange good the you know the keys if you want to already change them how you want you can do so but you know in my tutorial i recommend following the same keys and stuff and later on we'll tune in in anyway we don't have to change anything more we can close it and now go in the third person character blueprint i'm going to actually go into this area over here in the right so we have a bit more space so now we can use the ea sprint and what to do is that when it has started it will basically begin a loop 
okay so the loop will be basically a set timer by event so now we can basically be looping this time uh, that will basically leave it in an event. Anyway, you'll see in a second. So go ahead and check is looping and then the time we're gonna make it 0.1 seconds. So this will repeat a lot, but take only a bit of stamina. So we'll have a more smoother um, decrease on the health bar. Now also in the future, if you want, we can add some lurping. So it will be even more smoother, um, like with some interpolations. And we'll probably do that but for now we'll keep it simple anyway let's go into the event drag it and then let's say create custom event and this will be the rain stamina and what we have to do is you guess it go and get our player stats and then the decrease stamina function and now on here let's say for example one for now another thing that we're going to do is go and put all this to the right and actually change the player's velocity because we want to be able to run. So let's get the character movement and then go ahead and drag it and set max walk speed. And for now, we're going to say that it's going to be around 750 because right now the normal walk speed is at 500. Now, what we're going to do is that when we stop holding, what we can do is get all this. Actually, we'll put it down and then copy this node and then plug it in so we can reuse it. And in uncompleted, when we stop pressing the key, we'll plug it back into 500. And now what we can do is basically get all this, put it back to the right, and we can test this before we keep going. Um, so if I press play, I'm walking normally, but when I hold shift, sorry, control, I am running. And actually control is the worst key because we go ahead and crouch uh, with control. So let's go and go into the collection again and we'll change this to be out. Like I said, the keys are temporary, okay? So now if I hold out, you will see that now I am running and the stamina is raining, as you can see each second. And now we got to zero. So what we have to do now is that basically uh, when the stamina gets to zero, we cannot run anymore. As you can see now I'm back running. The difference is speed. Maybe in the video you cannot really appreciate it so much, even though I think you can, but uh, but it, you know when you test you will see it better. Anyway, we have to basically say that you cannot run if we have the stamina set at zero. And then also that when you stop moving, the stamina will slightly increase slowly. So let's go back into the third person get to blueprint, okay? And what we have to do is basically on started, <clears throat> well actually in the loop, we need to get this branch over here. So not stamina left. So if we don't have any more stamina left, what we'll do is create a new uh, variable and say con uh, sprint. Uh, yes, con sprint. <coughs> and by default, it will be true. So compile and then put it over here. And now the thing is that in the loop over here, uh, yes, over here, <coughs> sorry. Yes, here at the start. So basically, if we can sprint, we will go ahead and continue. But if we can't, nothing will go ahead and cap and happen. Now, we will need to set can sprint to be false over here. And in else, we can go ahead and toggle it to be true. Now, if we cannot sprint, we will immediately go ahead and set the character speed to be back at um, 500. So we will stop running. And then if we test this, you can see that we're running. Sorry, now running. The stamina is decreasing on the bottom bar. And then when we get into zero, I'm still running. And still can run. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so the thing is that, okay, sorry. So we are draining stamina by one and then setting this variable, but this, will only be available when we sprint at the start. So we will, we can keep that, okay, we can keep that. Um, but the control has to actually be at the start of the drain stamina. So this will be on true and on false. Basically, we will move this on here. Okay, so we'll be basically at the, at the, at the start. So now I'm running with alt and then when the stamina gets to zero i am still running and can run 
and I found the issue and we have to go into player stats and sorry I missed this so go into decrease stamina and you will see that we have current stamina to the dump button here suddenly we have current health and no we want to use current stamina so just drag it on top of it and it will change in both conditions over here so that was the issue so now if we go ahead and press out we'll be sprinting but then immediately we will go ahead and go back into walking as you can see and now we cannot go ahead and run anymore because we don't have any stamina great so that's working perfectly so we can go back here and now what we have to go ahead if, if, if you want i can drag this a bit to the right so everything can be a bit more uh, uh, less confusing there we go okay much better and another thing that we basically have to go ahead and do is basically stop this timer when we stop running because we don't want to have this always in a loop so what we want to do is get this return value and promote it and this will be the sprint loop okay and now what we want to do is on completed not only put back the result the velocity but get the sprint loop get it and then uh what was it it was uh, clear and invalidate time by handle basically it will delete the the loop okay we'll stop this over here great so there's only one more thing left for this stamina and also we're gonna command this so stamina and put the preset over here and what we want to do is go ahead and well increase the stamina when we are no longer running so what we're going to do is go and uh, open up the event tick so this will basically um, be called on every frame for each second so what I want to do here is basically um, just get overall the stamina and see if well sorry sorry if the velocity and if we are not moving so what we can do is just so uh, go here get velocity of the actor and then uh, vector length so we'll convert this into a nice float and if this is basically um, less uh, or equal to let's say one so we can have some threshold uh, we can go ahead and add a branch and basically this will mean if we're not moving because one is barely not moving you know actually you know what let's say zero so if we are not moving we will be able to basically increase our stamina so we'll go ahead and just make a small delay of let's say 0.1 because like i mentioned before this basically goes and plays in every frame so if not it will be pretty instantly so we want to play a delay and then what we basically want to go ahead and do is increase the stamina so we have to go into the uh, stats get this and then say basically increase uh, stamina and then we can put it by one for example uh, so this will automatically you know go ahead and detect if the stamina is below or bigger than zero so we don't have to do any calculations so now you can see that the stamina is increasing because i am standing still and it will also get into a point so now if i go and move and press out i'm running the stamina is decreasing if now i stop running and stop the stamina will be increasing and then uh, when i move you can see that the stamina stops increasing but then when i go ahead and run and completely drain my stamina you can see already it's looking so cool um in a second we'll get to zero and boom, there we go i am stopping uh basically stopping running and that also when i'm walking the stamina doesn't uh, recover but when i stop completely the stamina increases back again now cool there's one thing that we can do and it's change uh the the velocity to be is currently running so let's say that you want to be able to increase the stamina uh even if you're walking but not running so what we can do is create a new variable uh for that so we will actually actually do it that way so we're going to create a new variable and it's is um sprinting sprinting uh yeah and actually it will be just sprinting and then with uh, uh the symbol at the end so we'll basically go ahead and you say well is it not boolean sprinting so if we are not sprinting we can go ahead and increase the stamina and then here what we can do is go in here and say well in here sprinting will be um set 
to true well the end now uh, here it will be set to false okay in here it will be set to false in here into true and there we go so now basically i'm recovering and i can move and the stamina still recovers but when i run it decreases and i stop running and uh, there's uh, one more thing that we have to do go here and then on the completed okay so i missed that we need to go also put the is sprinting to false okay so now i am uh, basically walking and the stamina recovers and sprinting it decreases i stop running just walking and the stamina increases and then i stop and the stamina keeps going great so everything's working now there's a tiny thing that we have to change and it's the animation as you can see it is exactly the same one um for for uh, kind of jogging and also sprinting so we will have to change that now for now in this episode we will not do that we will do that in um in the future very soon okay so let's see what we do in the next episode put me ideas but probably what we'll do is change this animation and then go ahead and continue with the xp level system because i don't have uh, enough time to right now also uh, complete the xp and level system so don't worry next episode we will do go ahead and do so and then in the next episode after that we can just apply some cool sounds and and images for the ui and stuff like basically change the progress are to a better design and then after that we can begin with the combat system yes guys finally we will begin with the combat system very very soon so with all said guys if you found the video um, helpful i really appreciate you like the video and subscribe to my channel i have lots of unreal engine 5 tutorials so if you want to go ahead and check them out go ahead join the discord server so you can share your progress and also ask any questions and now yes with all said bye bye